today you will need a weight one super fine yarn this is actually crochet thread size three which is pretty much the same thing as a weight one yarn so either of those will work you'll need some bobby pins or stitch markers a pair of scissors a 2.75 millimeter hook and then a darning needle the construction of this purse is going to be really simple. So we're just going to make two rectangular panels and then one long strap. And then we're just going to slip stitch this all together. So this panel is going to be about a little over eight inches wide and just about five inches tall. So just in case you are using a different weight yarn, that is going to be the dimensions of this panel. So to get started on the panel, you are first going to make a slip knot on your hook, and then we're gonna chain up 50. So I just finished my 50 chains, and this chain is about seven and a half inches long. And I'm just measuring that for all of you who are using a different weight yarn. So this project will grow a little bit. All right, let's just move on to our first row. So once you are done with your chain, you're gonna wanna chain up an additional two. So one and two. And now for our first link double crochet, we're gonna insert our hook into the second chain from the hook. So we'll insert. You can either insert in the top loop or the back bump, whichever you prefer. Then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through that chain with two loops on your hook. We're then going to insert our hook into the following chain. Yarn over, pull through just that chain. And then with three loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through the first two. And then with two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both those two. All right, so that is our first linked double crochet. So now for the rest of our linked double crochets, they are going to work like this. So we have these two bars right here that almost look like a V. You're gonna insert your hook into the middle bar, then you'll yarn over and pull through just that middle bar. And now with two loops on your hook, you're gonna insert your hook into the next chain. Then you'll yarn over and pull through just that chain. And then you'll finish this up like a normal double crochet. So yarn over and pull through the first two loops and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So all of our linked double crochets are gonna be worked in just that same way. So again, you'll insert your hook into the middle bar, yarn over, pull through, then insert your hook into the next chain yarn over, pull through, and then finish it up like a normal double crochet. So you're gonna make one linked double crochet in each chain all the way down. And a little trick also to work this stitch is I kind of work it like going upwards or like having the chain go like this. And I think it's just easier to grab the middle bar that way. So you can see it's right here. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just something that I do. You guys can do it any way you like. All right, so that is the end of row one. So for row two, you're going to chain up two and then flip your work. And this chain two is not going to count as a stitch. So for our first linked double crochet, you're gonna insert your hook into the second chain that you just made. And we're gonna insert into the back loop only. All right, then you're gonna yarn over, pull through that chain and now you're gonna insert your hook into the very first stitch. All right, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then with three loops on your hook, complete like a normal double crochet. Oops, excuse me. All right, 
And then all of our linked double crochets going forward in this row are going to be just like we did in the previous row. So we're going to insert our hook into that middle bar, yarn over, pull through, right? and then we're going to insert our hook into the very next stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then complete like a normal double crochet. And you're going to continue to make one linked double crochet in each stitch all the way down the row. All right, and this is what row two should look like. Now what you'll do is chain up two, flip your work, and then continue to repeat row two until you've reached a total of 18 rows. All right, so I just finished up my 18 rows. So now what we're gonna do is create a single crochet border all the way around the rectangle. So keep your hook on the project, and what you're gonna do is chain up one and flip your work so you are working on this side. And pretend that this yarn isn't cut, okay? So don't cut your yarn. So we are going to place two single crochets in each of these double crochet spaces. So I'll first start inserting right into here. Now with the link double crochet, you're not going to be able to see spaces quite as easily as when you're just doing normal cro uh, double crochets. So just try to place two single crochets wherever you see fit. And what you could actually do is place your project down like this. And in each of these double crochet rows, just make sure that you have two single crochets. So just kind of count down all of your rows and just make sure there's two single crochets in each of those rows. So just continue placing two single crochets in each double crochet space until you reach the corner. All right, so this is what that first edge is going to look like. I made a total of 34 stitches, which is 17 rows times two. So now to start working on the bottom edge, the first thing we're gonna do is actually in that last space that you put that last single crochet in, you're gonna place two more single crochets in the very same space. So one and two, and that's just going to round out our edge. So now we're gonna be working on the bottom edge and we're gonna place one single crochet in each chain all the way down. So we'll start in the first chain with one single crochet, then the following chain, a single crochet as well. So just continue doing this all the way down until you reach the opposite corner. All right, so this is what our bottom edge is looking like. So now we'll move on to the opposite edge. And again, these are the double crochet spaces. So we're gonna make two single crochets in each of these double crochet spaces, except for in that very first double crochet. In this very first double crochet space, we're going to uh, mirror what we did on the opposite end, which means normally where you would put your first stitch, you're instead going to put three stitches so go into this first space, make one, two, and three, all in that same space. All right, and then I'll make my fourth stitch in the second space of that first double crochet space. All right, so now we're just going to make two single crochets in each double crochet space all the way to the corner. All right, so once you reach the last double crochet space, 
what you're going to do is place your first stitch and then where you would normally place your second stitch you are going to place three single crochets instead of just one so go one two and three all right so now we are at the top of the rectangle and we're just going to make one single crochet in each stitch all the way down so starting in this stitch right here one single crochet all right so now we've come up on the beginning of our border so as you can see that very first single crochet is actually going into this very last stitch right here so what we're going to do to finish off this border is place two single crochets in that last stitch for a total of three single crochets in that stitch right there so one and one more two now what we're going to do is slip stitch to that very first stitch we made we'll chain up one grab our scissors and cut mine's already cut so i'm just going to pull this right through and tighten all right so that is the first completed panel so all you're going to do for the second panel is repeat everything i just did here so once you are done with both panels come on back and i'll show you guys how to make this strap so the last thing that we have to make is the strap and the strap is 35 inches long by about one inch wide so again if you guys are using different yarn those are the dimensions so we are doing the same stitch for the strap as well First thing you are going to want to do is make a slip knot and we are going to chain up six because it's going to be six stitches wide so one two three four five six all right once you're done with your chain you're going to chain an additional two and now we're going to make our first linked double crochet so we'll insert into the second chain from the hook yarn over pull through and then we'll insert into the third chain from the hook yarn over pull through now with three loops on your hook you will complete this like a normal double crochet so yarn over pull through the first two and then yarn over and pull the last two all right now we're going to make our first true linked double crochet so we will insert our hook into that middle bar yarn over pull through just that middle bar now with two loops on your hook insert your hook into the next chain yarn over pull through then complete like a normal double crochet all right so you're going to make one link double crochet in each chain All right, so once you are done with row one, you're gonna chain up two, flip your work, and then make the first linked double crochet by inserting your hook into that second chain, the back loop only, yarn over pull through, and then insert your hook into the very first stitch. Then yarn over pull through the stitch and complete like a normal double crochet. So you're just going to make one link double crochet in each stitch for round two. Okay, so then for row three, we'll just chain up two, flip our work, and then repeat row two. So you're going to continue repeating row two until you reach about 116 rows. So once you have finished with that, come on back and I'll show you how to do the border for the strap as well. All right, so I'm cheating a little bit today because I didn't want to 
do the whole border for this strap. So I'm just going to show you guys on this little tiny piece right here because really it's pretty much the same as we did for our panels. So what you're going to do is once you have completed your 116th row, you're going to chain up one and then flip your work to the side. So now we're just going to be doing the same thing again as on the panels. So we'll place two single crochets in each double crochet space all the way down until you reach the opposite corner. So you'll place your first stitch here. And again, you can always check if you are making two single crochets in each row by just placing it down and saying, okay, here's the first row, one, two single crochets. Oops. Here is the second row right here, one, two single crochets. So just make sure you're making two single crochets in each of your double crochet spaces. So now you should be done with the first edge. To continue on to the little edge right here, we are going to make two single crochets in that very last space that we placed that last single crochet in. So one and two. So in this very last space, you should have a total of three single crochets. So now we're working on the little edge right here and we're going to place one single crochet in each chain. You want to make sure that you go into this very first chain space right here as well. So one single crochet. And you want to make sure that you are counting six single crochets that you just made across the top of this little edge here. So now once that is done, we're going to move on to the other long edge. So again, we're just going to make two single crochets in each double crochet space, except for that very first double crochet space. So where you would normally place your first single crochet, you are actually going to place three single crochets. So one, two, and three, all in that same space. And again, that's just to round out the edge. So now you will continue by making two single crochets in each double crochet space all the way to the other corner. So now you are at the opposite corner again. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing we did over at this end which means in that very last space that you made your last single crochet, you need to make two more single crochets. So one, and get out of here, and two. So three total single crochets in that last space. Now we're going to flip and we're going to make one single crochet in each of these stitches. And they're going to be six stitches that we are working across. So make sure you're counting that. So one, two, three, four, five, and oops, six. But again, it's just like on that panel, we're actually going to make one more single crochet in this last little stitch right here, just to round out the edge to have a total of three single crochets in this last stitch. So we'll just place one more like this. All right. And now we're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of our border. All right. So now we're going to chain up one, get our scissors, cut, and then pull right on through and pull tight. 
and that should be the end of your strap. So it should look something like this once you are done. Now that we have two panels and one strap, it's time to seam them all together to make a purse. So the first thing you'll need is just one panel and this strap. You want to make sure that the inside of your panel is facing towards you and that the outside is facing you know, downward. So this is the outside, this is the inside. You want the inside facing towards you. Then for your strap, you want the outside facing towards you. So inside facing towards you, outside facing towards you. Now what we're gonna do is put the strap on top of the panel just like so. And we're gonna start from this end and slip stitch all the way down. So now with the slip knot on your hook, I picked up the first corner right over here and we're gonna insert our hook into the second stitch of the three stitches we made for the corner on both the panel and the strap. So we see one, two, three stitches. So this will be our second stitch. I'm gonna pick up just that front loop only on the panel. And then we see one, two, three for the strap. So in that second stitch, I'm gonna pick up the back loop only. And now when I have that all on my hook, I'm gonna make a slip stitch through all of the loops. So I'm gonna pull right through all of them, including the slip, uh, slip knot as well. All right, so pretty much what we're going to do is make a slip stitch in the front loop only of the stitches on the panel and the back loop only of the stitches on the strap all the way down until we reach this corner right over here. So going into the next stitch, pick up the front loop on the panel and the back loop on the strap and then we're just going to make a slip stitch. All right, going into the next stitch, again front loop only, back loop only, slip stitch. All right, so now that we have reached the other corner, which looks something like this, we're really only just gonna keep making the single crochets all the way until we reach this opposite corner. So we're not doing anything fancy, we're just gonna continue making, I'm sorry, not single crochets, slip stitches all the way up until we reach the top over here. So we'll go into the next single crochet, I'm sorry, not a single crochet. Then we'll go just like this. And we're just gonna keep going. All right, we're not stopping now. <laughs> so just continue making your slip stitches until you get to the top corner. All right, so I'm finishing this Part of the slip stitch up at the third stitch in the three stitch corner. So this is the last stitch that I'm going to go into and for the last stitch I'm going to go through the whole entire stitch as well as the whole entire stitch of the strap just so that's a bit sturdier. So I'll pull through everything then after that we'll chain one, grab our scissors and then cut and pull that through that tight. So that's going to be the first part of our slip stitches. So now we finished seaming up these two sides. So let's start working on this third side over here. So first I'm going to flip it over and this is what the inside looks like. Now we'll take the strap making sure to keep it all straight and we're going to be connecting this end right here to this other end of the strap. So we'll be slip stitching from this end down to this corner and then from that to bottom corner we'll slip stitch all along this edge up to this corner right here. So starting with a slip knot what you're going to do first is insert your hook into the second stitch of these three stitch corner right here. 
you're going to insert into the front loop only. We'll consider this the front of our strap. And then we're going to insert into the second stitch of the three stitch corner right over here, but we'll insert into the back loop only and we'll consider this the back of the strap. Now make sure you're still working on the outside of your purse just so that all of these seams stay consistent. So now what we're gonna do once we have all of that together is just make a slip stitch through all three loops on the hook. All right, so now we're gonna make one slip stitch in all of these stitches until we reach this corner right here. So in that very next stitch, we'll take the front loop only of the front of this strap and the back loop only of the back of the strap, make a slip stitch, and continue doing that in each stitch all the way down into that little corner. All right, so we're pretty much at the end of the little join, this little corner right here. So the last thing we'll do is go into the very next stitch right here, front loop only. And then we will go into the back loop only of the next stitch right here. And once we do that, these this corner will pretty much join together. All right, so now what we're going to do is make these slip stitches all the way down this edge right here. And we're just gonna go right into doing that. So I will turn the work this way. And right in this very next stitch, we're gonna pick up the front loop only. And then going into this very next stitch, we'll pick up the back loop only and make a slip stitch. And you're gonna keep doing this until you've reached the opposite corner right up here. Now, once we've reached the very tip of this corner, so we're at the very top of the corner right now, you wanna continue making your slip stitches until you reach that very first stitch in that three stitch corner right here. So I'm gonna continue making slip stitches until I go into this stitch right here. And remember, once we are at that very last stitch, we're going to go through the very, <laughs> the very, we're going to go through the whole stitch right here, as well as the whole stitch right here. Then we will slip stitch all of that together. Turning this around, okay, you see that we have finished right off at that very last stitch in the three stitch corner. So now what we're going to do is chain up one, grab our scissors, cut through and that is going to be the first half of the purse assembly so the second half is going to be a whole lot easier so starting on the second panel seam what you're going to do is place it on top of the inside of your purse with the outside facing you so this is the outside of my second panel now what I've done over here is I've placed a bobby pin or a stitch marker in the stitch that corresponds with the number of stitches on this panel. So starting at the second stitch in that three stitch corner right here, I counted up how many stitches there were until I reached the third stitch of this three stitch corner up here. So I had 30 stitches, I'm sorry, 37 stitches all along this side right here. Then what I did was starting at this stitch right here, it's not this stitch, this stitch right here, I counted up 37 stitches as well, and I just placed this stitch marker so I knew where to start on the second panel. So the bobby pin is where we are starting on the seam. So what I'm gonna do is starting with a slip knot you're gonna take out the stitch marker or bobby pin, making sure you still see <laughs> which stitches it was in. Oh my God, it's so much black. 
Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your hook in the front loop only of this first side right here and the back loop only of the back side of that stitch right there. So once you have that, you're just gonna yarn over, pull through all of those, and then we'll start with our slip stitch all the way down and around the rest of this purse. So going into the very next stitch, you're gonna pick up the front loop only, and then on that back panel, or the back panel, I guess, you're gonna go in the next stitch, picking up the back loop only. All right, then we'll make a slip stitch. And you're just gonna continue doing this all the way around the purse until you reach the complete opposite side all the way over here. And then I just wanted to show you guys when you get to the corner part right here, we're not doing anything special. So we'll go into this stitch, we'll find the next stitch, slip stitch, and then we're going to go over this little bump, we'll go into that very next stitch right here, then find the next stitch on the back, and slip stitch. And then it's pretty simple the rest of the way, you're just going to continue making the slip stitches in every single stitch until you get to this corner up here. Now remember that you want to finish this up in the third stitch of the three stitch corner right here. So we have one more stitch to go. So, so many little ends to weave in. Do that. Oh, I'm sorry. In that very last stitch, remember we pick up the whole stitch. Then. There we go. So now what we're gonna do, chain up one, grab our scissors, cut and pull through. All right, and that is the final step in this purse. The only thing you have now left to do is to weave in all of these ends. And that is the final purse. So as you can see, I liked the seam, so that's why I wanted it on the outside of my project. But I mean, you guys can just flip this inside out and you don't have to see that seam. Um, I would flip this inside out, but I, I hid all of my ends in there. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys in a week or two. Bye. I gotta get up now. Oh, let's turn the light off. Oh, shoot.